Okay, as we start off our study in the Gospel of Luke, we're going to take this, start off in the beginning and work our way to the end, which I hope to study about the Lord Jesus Christ and his life, doing it prayerfully and to give God the glory. Uh, we're going to hopefully look into some aspects of not just studying the Gospel of Luke, but the other Gospels that go along with it, Matthew, Mark, and John. But we'll start off with Luke and who he is. In Colossians 4.4, 4, Luke, I am told, is the only Gentile to be writing. Colossians 4 4. And that's wrong. Colossians 4 4 is not what I'm looking for. Sorry, right, we're starting this off. 14. 4 14. Luke, the beloved physician. Luke is a medical doctor. Luke, today, what would have be of the knowledge? wisdom and understanding of the body so when we come to the study of the woman that had the issue of blood he'll use a medical term Luke is no dummy to be writing the, uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in 2nd Timothy 411 2 Timothy 4.11 Paul is writing on his deathbed testimony. The last writing of Paul, he writes to Timothy. He says in 2 Timothy 4.11 Only Luke is with me. So Luke, the medical doctor, is a companion of Paul. And if you look at Acts 1, and we'll see this in Luke, I mean, yeah, we'll see this in Luke 1. In Acts 1, 1, the former treaties have I made unto Theopolis, we're going to see that in Luke. Luke is the writer of of the book of Acts and there's one point I see if I can find it real quick I don't have this down but there is one point that with Paul I'm looking over, I know I got the note here when you go to Acts 16 verse 10 Acts 1 tells us that Luke writes 2 Timothy 4:11 says that he is a companion in Acts 16 10 you have something that, that happens in this book there's a all the way up to now in verse 3 you read about Paul him whom Paul had to go forth with him uh, Verse 6, they're on their journeys. And you find something that's weird. In verse 9, a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man in Macedonia and prayed to him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And I believe when he goes over there, I believe a woman gets saved. And after he had seen the vision, immediately, and mark that we. From 16.10 on, we. And when you talk about the shipwreck later on in the book, in the book of Acts, it says we. That we is Luke. Acts 16.10, all of a sudden Luke starts writing the first person. And that's when Paul says in 2 Timothy 4.11, Luke is with me. He has been with Paul since 16, 
10, probably as an aid to the ministry, and probably because Paul is just probably one beat up sore body. He writes to Timothy later on. I guess Timothy has stomach problems or whatever. The verse that every drunk knows. He finally knows. He says, Luke, uh, Timothy's having a little problem with his stomach or something. You just write to him in the epistle say, drink a little wine for his often stomach infirmity. Where did he get that from? The medical doctor told him. So, I mean, that's little nuggets. You know, scripture with scripture will tell you. There he is. So Luke chapter 1. And those kind of little nuggets we're going to go along and learn about. I like the Gospel of Mark. I just thought it was just a little, not really much into it. I don't like Matthew. For the only reason, every church runs to Matthew. And Matthew is a Jewish book. Everybody does John. Uh, the key word is lost. The praise, son of man, 25 times. Luke pictures Christ as the son of man. The perfect man. Now let me go over here real quick. My notes are all over the place. Let me get you with the God. I believe I have a note over here about the Gospels. Uh, I know they can put something here. Okay, the Gospels. Matthew is Jesus as king. A Jewish king. And the genealogy goes to the first Jew, Abraham. Mark, Jesus as a servant, so he has no genealogy. Most Africans that were brought to America, you cannot trace their genealogy. Matter of fact, most of their names are not even their names. When they were set free, they were get, they were had an opportunity to change to choose a name. The Luke, as we're saying, as I said, is the son of man, Jesus, and the genealogy goes back to the first man, Adam. And John, Jesus, as the son of God, and God has no genealogy. With, um, I got a note here, Philemon 24 for Luke 2, maybe he shows up there. Luke is Greek. If you go back and read Colossians 4, 11 to 14, we just read. Um, the Greeks sought constantly to discover ways to achieve a perfect humanity he is a Gentile he's called the perfect uh, excuse me called the beloved physician and uh, we go on it has a Greek flavor So, 1-1. One, one. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a decoration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Many. It's not a few. Many have tried to write the account of Jesus' life and ministry. But few were chosen to be put into the books. 
The Holy Spirit would only allow Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Others wrote about Jesus, but their writings will never made it a canon into the Bible. Paul wrote more than 14 letters. I guarantee Luke wrote many letters. I believe Matthew and Mark and John would have wrote more letters. But the inspiration of the Lord Jesus Christ, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, are the ones of the books that we have that the Holy Spirit wants us to have. So there were other people who wrote about Jesus' life. And it's funny because when you go to the end of the Gospel of John, he tells us uh, 21, verse 25, the last verse of the Gospel of John. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. According to his Gospel, what he wrote, there are many more things he did. The which, if they should be written, every one, if you wrote down everything Jesus did, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. And you back that up with, with what Luke said. People wrote about Jesus. I would assume some for and some against. And we're going to look as we study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what the Holy Spirit would have us to have, plain and simple. Oh, I found this book by blah, blah, blah. Who cares? It's not what the Holy Spirit wanted us. I'm going through Josephus. Uh, it's it's his books on, on audio I'm listening on memory. and you know he's got a lot of good things and he's got a lot of things that go against the Bible surely believed he says he didn't just believe it but surely believed Luke is a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will find Luke in heaven. Amongst us. Amongst us is the apostles and the brethren. As we said, we, he was already there with, with Paul. He was there with the others. And we can just go on and on and on looking at things like this. Even as they de delivered, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So he tells you amongst us, he's talking about the, the disciples, the apostles, the ministers of the word. Eyewitnesses, 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. We're not talking about Greeks. And what Luke is saying, listen, I'm a Greek, and I'm not talking about a Greek. You know what the Greeks would do? They would sit around and, and, and rap and, and think about things and write them. They were called philosophers. And what Luke is coming out and saying before he even addresses his letter, Dear Theropolis, I want to make something of a surety here. 
What I'm going to write is witnessed, not just something we thought of. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John did not sit down and have a powwow in a room and, oh, you know, smoke some kind of weed and drink some kind of stuff and write what they saw about certain music that were written under drugs and alcohol during the 60s and 70s. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a stated fact. 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, that which was from the beginning. Uh-oh, that matches what this Luke just said. John backs up Luke, and Luke backs up John. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Our eyes. This is not Johnny on the spot news reporter. This is the beloved John saying, I saw it with my eyes. By the way, Peter, who writes the Bible, saw it with his eyes. Paul, who writes the Bible, saw it with his eyes. Matthew, who writes a gospel, saw it with his eyes. Mark, who wrote a gospel, saw it with his eyes. Luke, who saw it with his eyes. John, oh, which is myself. Which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Jesus Christ, John 1.1. 1, 1. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness. That means John could walk in the courtroom, raise his right hand, I swear to tell the whole, where's the Bible, first of all? I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, sit down and tell the eyewitness account of what he saw. First-hand knowledge. And show unto you, not only my witness, I'm going to show it unto you, that eternal life that was with the Father and was manifest unto us. We are a witness. Acts 2.32 Acts 2.32 In verse 14, Peter stands up and starts talking. In Acts 2.32, this Jesus has God raised up from the dead, wherein whereof we all are witnesses. And later on, Paul tells us over 412 people saw him, including Paul, 413. That's a witness. We saw Jesus Christ resurrected. Mary saw Jesus Christ resurrected. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, sit down. Uh, on the third day, Mary, what did you see? I saw what I thought was the gardener. Isn't that what was recorded? Doesn't that what the gospel records? I thought she sat down and said, hey, I thought he was the gardener. And that, nah, and the news, and the story, and goes on, and it's recorded. You know what happened that day, because she was a witness, and she recorded it down to tell us. Paul, he's going down the road to Damascus, and then he tells us his eyewitness account. This is nothing thought of. Now, Back to Luke 1. I'm turning back to Luke 1. Let me say something. Let me say something. Where is the witness account where you can call somebody to a stand in a courtroom of evolution? The witness is gone. There is no witness. Where is the witness account from Genesis to Revelation that states that we're the one church founded upon Jesus Christ? Without misinterpreting the scripture. 
Where's the witness? That the fact is, you can stand in a courtroom like Luke is doing. I'm not talking about physically in a courtroom, but he, he's on trial and he's going to tell his testimony and he's going to give a witness and he can swear by it. And then he writes. John can swear by it and he writes. Paul also. The ministers are those that saw and the Lord appointed them to go and do his work. That's what we have. Verse 3. Not really much meat here. And we'll try to get the first four verses down and we'll call it quits. And then we'll start getting some interesting things. But verses 1 to 4 is the introduction. It's the beginning of the letter. Why? Who? It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. If I got his name wrong, people get my name wrong. A Greek name. Now let's go, let's go over to Acts chapter 1, 1 again real quick. Acts 1.1 1, 1. You know, I, this is much better than jumping for Jesus, you know, and clowning around. All right, say that. The former treaties have I made, O Theopius, however his name is. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. What does those eight words tell you? The former treatise. That I had made unto Theopius. What was his name? I gotta stop saying his name, messing it up. There was according to Acts 1 1, there was a writing to this man, this Greek man. I'm not gonna say his name again. What was that writing? Do you know? Yes, you do. Gospel of Luke. There he is. So, the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles is, read, is written to Theopius. I have to say his name again. That's who it's written to. And the Holy Spirit inspired both books for us to be in our laps. And you don't even know who he is. May I put one? May I put that as my question tomorrow on my Bible trivia? Who is Theopius? You ought to know. Two books of the Bible is written to him. And he's named by name. Listen, when when John writes his second epistle to the elect lady, we don't even know her name. Imagine two the elect the elect lady. This guy's name. Now, it says Luke was a witness. It seemed good to me having the perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent see of I got to say saying his name. Keep messing it up. He was a sure witness, we read. And Luke has perfect understanding by the Holy Spirit to write what he's going to write. Luke is saying, listen, I am writing under the Holy Spirit here in perfect understanding what I'm going to do. And let me look over here. See what kind of, I've got notes in my Bible and i got notes on the paper and you see me turning my Bible and flipping through and checking. You ought to have notes and flipping through your Bible and checking. Uh, let's see. I'll read this. Alright. 1 Corinthians 14.40 says, let all things be done decently and in order. 
And he's going to do it in a decent, onto the in order. Uh, I don't know if that's going to say that events in, in Luke's life, which I really haven't gone that far yet in the study. I'm taking it chapter by chapter. But in order, I wonder if Luke, and I did not look into this, I'm just seeing it now, that if maybe the, how Luke lays it out is the order that it happened. We'll get into that later and we'll see. And may the Holy Spirit remind us to come back to this verse and we find out if that's the kind of order. I don't know everything. And I have another note here. Let me go check. I got no toes, please. I like to study Ephesians, but I can't find it in my Bible. But it's all written up. The Bible says mark the word of God. It says Titus 1 5. Paul's writing to Titus. For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set in order the things that are grant wanting, and ordain elders. Alright, there's two orders here. There, there's an order that, hey, one, two, three. And then there's an order that get it established, get it working, get it functioning, do what you're supposed to. And those are the two aspects of order that you probably can see in Luke that, hey, maybe one, two, three, but set it down, get it right, get it functioning to know the story. And we're going to begin the story with a man named John. We're going to get to that. And John is not even born yet. And we're going to start Luke in a very weird place. We're going to start Luke, the story, in the holy place. And we're going to talk about a, a baby that's going to be born and we're not going to be talking about Jesus. You got to do things decently in order. John needed to be first before Jesus. That's the order. So let's start the whole story in God's holy place. How's that for a beginning? Thou, that thou may, thou, that guy's name, Theophilus. He's writing to the guy. He's saying, listen, for you. Myers know that certainly of things, of those things, wherein thou hast been instructed. Theophilus has been told, he has been shown about the Lord Jesus Christ. I have been told about Jesus Christ. I had a Bible open with me. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have been told things about him. I have been told lying things about Jesus. The office, I'm going to write down now, I am going to write out the story of the Lord Jesus Christ that you have been instructed, that you can know certainly about the man of God, about the child of God, about the son of God, about Jesus Christ. And you know what? I, you see a lot of comparisons, and I didn't see this stuff before. You see a lot of comparisons in John and Matthew. I mean, John and Luke, and this one, uh, oh, I don't know what this one is, but John writes, these things have I written unto you that you may know. And John writes, these things I have written that you may believe on, on, on Christ. That's what, that's what Luke is saying right now. You have been instructed. I'm going to write it out for you so you can read it. John, 
John 20, 31. John 20, 31. I keep going to Acts. The book is stuck in Acts. Back in Acts again. All right, 19, okay, no Acts. 20, 31. I'm not there yet. I'll get to Acts again. But these are written and he says that thou mightest know certain of these things wherein thou hast been instructed he did say somewhere he was written he was written Dec uh, he says one one he says an order of decoration all right that's written these things are written that ye might believe that jesus is christ the son of god and that believeth he may have life through his name. And that's exactly what Luke's writing. You've been instructed. I'm going to write it out for you. In verse 24, John 21, 24, and 25. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. For he said unto him, Except I shall see in his hands to print the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Luke wants, John wants, the people that he's writing to, to believe. That's why they're writing. Luke is writing to this Greek man. I want you to believe what you've heard. I want to be a witness. I want to be told to you. They're not just writing this and, and, and I seal it up in a, in a safe somewhere in Utah. You say, why do you got to do that? Because Jesus Christ is proclaimed openly and rightfully. And John 19.35 and he that saw it bared record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he says true, that ye might believe. In first John five thirteen. First John five thirteen. Why is this written? Why was John's gospel written? 1 John 5.13 These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Luke wants to confirm what Theopius, oh boy, I really missed his name, was told to make sure, to make sure there is no error. See, I want you to make sure, brother Theophilus, that when you read about the birth of Jesus, there were no three magi. That's a lie. Go ask Brother Matthew. See, the Magi and the Shepherds are in two different Gospels because they, they don't want you to get them put together. Because then somebody will be selling some kind of a building and, and little stick figures probably. You know, they'll sell you the building by itself. Then you've got to buy the little baby Jesus. Then you've got to buy the little the little thing for Jesus to lay. And then you got to buy the cow separate. And you got to buy, you know, you got to buy three wise men separate. Because three and can't get the price for one because we gotta get more sucker money from you, so we gotta make it three. And don't forget the camels that they were riding on. You gotta buy three camels they were riding on, and then you know, and you gotta buy the you know, the, and this, and that's not the story. John and Luke are writing till you will know the story of Jesus. So we break down the first four chapters, the first, excuse me, of chapter one. 
And what Luke is saying in the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this is the perfect work of Jesus. And if you say, well, there's a contradiction between Matthew, Mark, or John, you better read it more carefully. And you better study to show thyself approved unto God, working that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine. There's no contradiction. There's an added fact or... You just haven't got it right. There's never a contradiction. And we're going to look through all the Gospels that we find that, that these writings that are in. Luke starts off. John ends up. What Luke starts off and John closes with his Gospel. This is for the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that you get your facts straight. And I'm going to tell you something, and you, and you may not like this. If you get into the Gospels and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as you should, as the Scriptures say, the way the Gospel is presented to you, and you fall off to the Mormons, you fall off to the Jehovah Witnesses, you fall off to somebody else, you're not saved according with the Bible. Because nobody who, who is involved in Luke and Acts and who are saved like the, like the Bible says, say, they never fall off to any heretics. Because you have it in sure writing. It is in black and white. Now heretics may come in. And Paul writes to heretics that have fallen into the, one of his churches. And he says, why, why have you gone off? But to deny the God. When religion out there says that God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God. You haven't read Luke. You haven't read John. And salvation is based upon the true fact is that God is Jesus and Jesus is God. And that is what Luke is going to show us. Luke will give us the virgin birth in detail. Luke is going to hit a church and their doctrines that you ought to walk away from that organization and say that's a lie. See, we're going to attack heresies. We're going to attack religion. We're going to attack man. We're going to attack science. Because Luke said, I want you to know that what I'm writing is perfect. I don't want you, and, Paul, and John finishes his gospel, I don't want you to have any doubt on what you have read and what you have believed. We'll close there and pick up with the birth of the John the Baptist. Well, if I won't pick up that, we'll, we'll get and study about John the Baptist. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus
Jesus died for you. And the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops. Tell the world around me Jesus saves. I have made my choice, gonna make a joyful noise. Bye. 